So you've got a new administration which is re-examining everything, an administration which is committed to audacity and hope and the fierce urgency of now, okay? Well, and which has a sufficient political support in Congress to actually implement a bold program should they decide to embrace it. The American people want and deserve a space program that is really going somewhere. By taking decisive action, by making a decisive recommendation to break us out of this stagnation that we've had in the space program for several decades, for four decades, four decades of stagnation is enough. Mr. Augustine, members of the commission, I'm asking you to make a bold recommendation to Mr. Obama that he seize the time and move America forward in space. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, your enthusiasm is certainly all happy. And, uh, <laughs> we, we appreciate that as well. Uh, I uh, very passionately uh, express some of your other motivations uh, for human space flight. Um, there is, uh, I think all of us feel, a, a deep human need to explore, to go places where we have it. I think it was described as a spiritual uh, need, and, and, and that's significant. Um, I will tell you personally, uh, you know, one of the things I've involved in, been involved in for the last uh, many years now is the, the Mars Exploration Rover, Spirit and Opportunity. And like me, uh, most of the people who built those rovers grew up during the 60s, watching Mercury and Apollo and uh, all that stuff on television, and dreaming of sending send spaceships to Mars someday. And now we get to do it. And so the inspirational role the thing that causes young people to go into, uh, into engineering and so this important. And there are many others. Uh, it's, it's not just the science. And do you think those goals are sufficient to justify an $80 billion program over the next decade? If it's $80 billion over a decade, yeah, I personally do. I personally think that those address pressing needs at a national level uh, that justifies that kind of expenditure. Eight million dollars over a decade, that's eight, bill, eight billion dollars, excuse me, uh, a year. And uh, to me, that's, that sounds like a very good investment. Um, question is, is that what real cost? Steve, thank you very much. We appreciate your honesty and your candor as always. Uh, we now have uh, the privilege of hearing from uh, uh, some of our colleagues in Europe. Uh, the first, uh, is actually uh, uh, very close to uh, conceptually to both the one that Bob Zubrin presented this morning and to the Mars, to, I'm sorry, the NASA Mars Design and Reference Architecture 5.0, which is a, 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 an option in which we do, in fact, go directly to Mars with the friendly amendment of maybe you take the Mars hardware and. Uh, go to a near-Earth object or do a test flight to the moon, but only for the purposes of validating and demonstrating the Mars hardware. So we would, in that, uh, almost certainly need to extend uh, the uh, ISS uh, using IPs and then commercials. And here we take all of the budget uh, for all practical purposes other than some stimulation of the commercial launch to Leo business and the, the money just to extend the ISS, and we put it on building systems for Mars, and we build them as quickly as possible in order to reach Mars as the, as the next destination. So Norm, um, that's uh, still many, but many fewer than uh, 834, or whatever the number is, and uh, I did try and get through it in a timely way. 